powered by Riverside FM. Pandora's Box In Greek mythology, this vessel was a curse sent down from the gods as a punishment on mankind. It contained sickness, death, and many other evils that were then unleashed onto the world. However, there was one more thing within the vessel left behind. Hope. On this episode of Bullet Time, we take a look at a game inspired by the story of Pandora's Box. One that hoped to live up to its namesake, despite containing its own fair share of evils. Spark Unlimited's 2008 shooter, Legendary. No, no, God, I, no. I, you didn't I have no it? Id- I have no idea where Kevin <laughs> got to, but I played about as much as I could. I looked on YouTube to see how far away I was, and it was about half an hour. I put a few extra minutes in today, and I was like, "No, this is shit. I can't." Like, I'm. My- I I finished it because I thought that was the point. No, the point is to talk about it. <laughs> no, I thought no. you were all. I thought everyone was gonna finish it, no, and no, I was gonna be the you, one. You I'm pretty right. sure you're the only person the who's actually finished the game. To, the correct thing to do would have been to finish because we played a lot of other stuff, which we have actually we've enjoyed so much. Some of these games I've enjoyed so much, I've done multiple playthroughs of them at different difficulties to see what the differences are, and yeah. all the extra game modes as well. But this, I was like. I I fucking can't. My brain is like struggling to engage with this. I was I I so fired mad. it up last night with the intention of like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm just gonna force my way through it, and I played for one minute, <laughs> and I was like no I don't want to anymore, and. <laughs> <laughs> we're covering there's another game that we're covering for a later episode. I was like, I'm gonna go play that, and then I ended up uh-huh. playing that for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm happy. I'm happy that my my personal goal this year to play a bad game yes. to completion um has led to the two of you playing many mid to bad games uh-huh. yeah. and not finishing the one that was my goal. <laughs> that is that is a weird way to think of it. That's we have a lot of bad way. games on our plate. As, as you've kind of so alluded funny. to. Uh, hi folks, welcome to Bullet Time, the video game podcast which analyzes the shooters that missed their mark. And uh, yeah, this is the first episode that we are doing of this podcast, although... We have kind of done it in and out of order in regards to some of being recorded before and whatever, but this is the mating episode that we're doing, and it is very much because, as you have alluded to, Nevin, yeah, this was the, the, the this was the champagne bottle that christened the ship. <laughs> but the, the champagne, champagne bottle of mud. <laughs> yeah, the champagne had turned to vinegar, and the ship is the Titanic. So it's. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe it I'm is. the only one who finished it. <laughs> I, I I know I I we we're gonna have to dig into that. I mean I'm gonna have to like make you like a fucking award or something for <laughs> you're, you're probably the only. I bet you got an achievement for completing it. And you're point one percent of players. Not point not not one percent of players have this. Like you know, somebody I, from, di- I didn't get an achievement for finishing it actually, what? which is kind of kind of fucked up. <laughs> I was about to say the PC Sorry. version. I don't think has Chivos in it, which is like, no, this is an Xbox three. This is the most fucking Xbox three hundred and sixty ass game. Why hasn't this got yeah, achievements no achie- in it? No achievement. This is prime Chivo material right here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Uh, oh my god. 
The game that we're talking about today, folks, is uh, legendary. But before we get into it further, first things first, uh, I'm James uh, from the Twitter page and YouTube channel Hot Cider. <laughs> I am jo- <laughs> I know. This is, so this, is, this, is, this is what I do. I come on a from podcast and I, I ruin intros. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. This is... Uh, Perfect it course. couldn't be going more smoothly at this point. Um, I'm joined. Uh, my guest host for this episode is the Pandora's Box of Video Game Literature himself, Kevin from Pixel Lit. Hello. That's a good one. I enjoy that that's one. That's pretty good. I like that. That's good. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, that's my plan for all these episodes. So that whoever the guest host is, they're going to have like a little custom introduction because obviously Kevin's got the uh, podcast Pixel Lit. Uh, mm, he's going to be podcast. like the antagonist of video game literature sometimes this might work out in a funny way sometimes as was the case when we covered wolfenstein it got very awkward very quickly it, it was delightfully awkward <laughs> yes <laughs> can't wait um, to hear that god i but um joining us on this um episode i mean they had to be on this first episode because of the game that we're talking about the person who inspired pretty much the concept of this podcast uh table talk game designer nevin holmes Th- thank you for joining us hey hi do i drop my ats yeah go ahead um okay. yeah t- t- tell the folks at home who you are and then i gotta yeah, and then wonderful. i have to ask some important questions <clears throat> ah questions great yeah uh hi i'm nevin i use they he pronouns i'm a queer tabletop uh game designer based out of central texas uh, I am an award-winning tabletop game designer. Yes! Uh, I won best... God damn right you are. God damn right I am. Um, my game, Gun and Slinger, won best rules of the year for 2022 uh, in the Indie Groundbreakers, and that's hella cool. Uh, yeah. You can find me on Twitter, at Fork20, and you can find uh, all of the awesome game stuff that myself and my wife do uh over at dino berry press on twitter nice love that name yeah it's it is good. a good name it's a good name she came up with it i take zero credit <laughs> the, lo- the logo of it is really good as well it is just really cleverly done it, it makes a it makes a good sticker oh yeah dino berry press.com yeah. slash shop <laughs> there there we go right into the merch i know Slide right, right into, into it. merch Listen, I have to. I might have to cover another print run out of pocket. I gotta. No, I gotta that is, it's not gonna happen. It's fine. We're gonna try and use the podcast to raise awareness because we don't want to raise awareness of the game we're talking about. So no. instead, we're gonna use our power to raise awareness of um, how, helping you out of your pickle. Which uh, we it's won't, fine. It'll be fine. We don't need to. Yeah, do it. <laughs> by the time this episode comes out, which will be support uh, Justicar, everybody. That's all we'll yeah, say. Yeah, and just, support just go and, go and go and support it, however that's possible. A game over which on Dinoberry Press dot Dinoberry Press dot com is that Dinoberry Press dot com. Nevin, ins- Nevin inspired this podcast. I kind of weirdly inspired Justicar, not massively, but I it, it, I would say pretty. Like the uh, the kindling for the fire that became yeah. just the car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I gave you I gave you the newspaper soaked in oil, which kind of uh, you, you had the idea. I would of say the fire I would say with. I would say you actually gave me a Molotov cocktail. Yeah, you provided the rag into the into the alcohol <laughs> yeah. God. that would um, become the Molotov. <laughs> God, this game is Molotov. Yeah, this cocktails. because yeah. this guy said, "Hey, Nevin, do you want to be on? Uh, do you want to like be a guest player in a courtroom <laughs> do you, do you thing I'm doing? Do you want to be a doing? judge in a, in a fake trial that we're doing in one of our tables? <laughs> <laughs> and and me, the little gremlin game design freak that I am, made yeah. a game. <laughs> oh yeah, and it was yeah, good. good. It's and then game. just like kind it. of from there, you've been able to like develop it into something just way more fleshed out mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just like it's all the cool. all the artwork that's been done for it looks fantastic as well sam's art is so good um i but say all these kind mm-hmm. words to then uh-huh. say nevin i know that you said that you were going to play one bad fps game like for uh-huh. the year yeah why legendary <laughs> why uh, the, I, mean, I, can audio- of, I, I can sort of see there's elements in there where it's like, oh, this is like Nevin shit. Like all the monster stuff, I think, is like, yeah, that's uh-huh. totally on your wavelength. Yeah, but then yeah. the so, rest of it is. We're going to take a 
first for it does this release in audio only format right uh, it does we're figuring it out yeah we might we record okay. the video but then we might do some yeah. vi- we might do some stuff with the video clips but it'll mostly be audio so okay. if you uh, i'll describe whatever you put up well for for the for the audio listeners uh the face that James made when he asked that question was one of <laughs> sheer disgust. Um, <laughs> legendary is like legendary has been this thing for me. Um, right. When it was being marketed, I was like, this seems very cool. And when it came out, I was like, this is very bad, very bad. It's a bad game. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is something that I had tried to, it, it was a bit for me kind of. Okay. Um, <laughs> I had a Let's Play YouTube channel that I ran with my friends called Friendly who Fire. Honestly, let's who, who did not in 2015, you know? Right. This was all, all four of us, like, got together at our apartment and recorded. Right. Some of the videos are, are, all the videos are still up, and I think they're all still really good. Um, but one of them that we did, we were like, I, we don't know what to record it. And it was like, I know what we'll record today. Let me show you a legendary. Let me show you a bad <laughs> game. So we recorded the opening sequence. Um, up to where you like get into the subway. Uh, right. And we're just bawling at how bad this game is. Yeah. Um, and then like anytime I'm hanging out with friends like on Discord nowadays and they're like, I don't know what to do. It's like, let me show you a legendary. Yeah, let's play legendary. <laughs> Is it like your version of the ring? Like it's just kind of like, hey, you want to see a video game? And then it's just like you have to, sp- <laughs> you have to spread like legendary as yeah, much as yeah. you can. That's it. Uh, I actually made a deal with the devil, and if I don't make everyone I know play, it's like a chain letter, but a yeah, bad video game. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't play legendary, you'll die in in forty days. But if you do, you'll have riches or something like if that. You, you know? If you do play a legendary, you'll die in two. <laughs> <laughs> you don't but have to wait. Oh, you'll, com- you'll complete it in half a day, hopefully. Unless- yeah, you'll have you'll have time. You should have time to, you know, put your affairs in order. But yeah. no, it's just it's just this is the bad game that has been looming over my shoulder. I've always wanted to finish it. I knew it wouldn't be good, right. but I just wanted to finish it. And now I have and I can think about it more <laughs> i think at one point i i dm'd james and was like does does nevin like this game i'm just trying to get a vibe on <laughs> no why we're playing this <laughs> we're playing it because i think it does in a weird way kind of sum up the tone of the podcast which is like no one is no one is going to talk or like analyze this it's bizarre. This game, I think, is, like, completely memory hold by most people. I think, like, mm. the only people now mm-hmm. who have Legendary in their Steam list is that... Because I don't even think you would get this in, like, a Humble Bundle. Nobody owns, like, Legendary <laughs> as a game. It was... That's the thing. Nobody has ever bought Legendary. It just shows no. up in their library. <laughs> That's what I mean, yeah. It's like... <laughs> It is a haunted game. It's you um, know I had that I had that theory about the book spooky stories to tell in the dark that it it would just appear on your on your <laughs> <laughs> on your bookshelf one day. It never really uh, you never bought it or would remember buying it. But yeah, legendary, same thing. I don't remember yeah. actually buying it. In, it's in my Steam library though. I was about to say, did you buy it for the podcast or did you buy it previously? Me, Me? Uh, Kevin. No, oh, I bought it for the podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, because Nevin, you, 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 like I said, I, you I've already... owned this game for a few years. <laughs> God, I think I've owned this game for. I think I have also owned this game for a few years because there was a time where it was like, I had just seen a screenshot of it and I was like, oh yeah, I remember the advertising of this game. Oh, I should just grab I, it. I want to. I want to dig into that real quick because, like, yeah, please do. How this game presents outside of the executable file that you run on your computer um kind of kind of sick it's kind of cool. sick as hell it's pretty cool modern day well modern day at the time yeah, um, yeah. Sure. early 20s uh, yeah early uh, late 2000s early 20s late two th- mid 2000s whatever we're in the um, arts <laughs> Pandora's box gets opened in New York City and you have yeah. to fight all these mythological creatures with guns 
you have guns. Not that the Minotaur doesn't have guns. That would Which be good, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it seems cool, right? Yeah. I want to fucking fight a fight a griffin. It's the sort yeah. of thing that they would make like a 90s kit, like a Christopher Columbus, Jumanji style 90s movie of, you know, kid in New York, you know, That's goes to the, the Smithsonian, accidentally opens Pandora's box. Oh, yeah. And this, then werewolves and griffins turn up. This and it's game like, is Chris Columbus's shit. This, it, this is, is a great idea. <laughs> it <laughs> wants to be a movie yes. so bad. It wants to be a movie so bad, but it doesn't have any idea what telling a story is like. No, it is. I think it's or interesting, interesting that characters. You, you have kind of nailed upon the fact of like, as an advertising piece, yeah, this game like fucking rocks because like the box art of it is sick as fuck. Like the logo is just Honestly, a bit of yeah. text art, it's whatever. <laughs> but like, it's a guy like fighting griffins with guns, and it's not like it's not like serious Sam or Doom where it's kind of like a little bit too tongue in cheek. No, it's like presented matter of fact, That's and it's like this is too. cool. I I didn't realize until I sat down in front of this microphone how many thoughts I actually have about this game. That's wow. great. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I remember messaging you, James, like, do I need to like do research? I'm worried I'm not going to have anything to talk about. Um, but there's so much about this game that legitimately could have been very cool and very it's good. It's urban fantasy. Yeah, like, how often do you see that in, like, games? Not often at all. And I feel like the reason we don't see it a lot is... Because the things of it that we do get are legendary. <laughs> yeah. Um, people yeah. don't want to broach a genre or uh, a style that the last time it showed up was bad. No. Yeah. Because Which people it, look at the people look at the numbers and they don't think, well, if I do it good, I'll do better. They look at the numbers and go, well, someone tried it and it sucked, so it's always going <laughs> to suck. No, which I think is, look, this is the perfect example with legendary because it's like, you can see in your mind, like, somebody, a better developer, could take this concept and make a fucking sick game with this. Like, all the cool components mm -hmm. are there, but it's just the game itself is like, if they remove the, like, the fantasy element, if the Griffins were just, like, robots or whatever, the game would still be really shit. Like, that's yeah, the, the, the <laughs> fantasy <laughs> parts of it. The only thing are... that it has going for it is the concepts, and the concept uh -huh. can, uh, only gets it past that initial mm -hmm, mm -hmm. section. But it was also really funny thinking about the fact that it's like, yeah, this is like the perfect game for advertising because I can imagine like somebody cutting a trailer and it has that Metallica style, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, like mm -hmm. as he's like shooting people and whatever. It's like, yeah, legendary. Trailer. Now out on the Xbox 360, <laughs> coming soon to Xbox 360. But then you play and the then the, game. the logo text slaps up <laughs> and you hear the and Griffin it, 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 like scream. Ah! Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah, Just like, like yeah, the, like the stinger shot is like a bunch of werewolves like hopping at the camera, and you're like, yeah, this game's sick as fuck. And then you play the game, and it's like, shit. How do we turn an in? How do we turn a trailer into a four hour experience? <laughs> and they do, they have no <laughs> idea. Like all the music is, I I, I know it would be. I know it's a little bit out of order, but I do just want to because I'll forget to talk about it otherwise. The fucking music in this game cracks me up every single time. It's it so starts. funny because I want to imagine that it was like <laughs> they brought in a like they didn't have a band. They had a guy with a guitar with an, with like fifteen effects pedals and a drum machine, and they just one of the guy and they said, "Give us metallic, like give us kind of like Metallica, but not like a Metallica song. Give us like just ambient Metallica." And he was like, "Okay." It's like it's the LaCroix of Metallica. Yeah! <laughs> it's like water. It's a, a hint of flavor. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a record that was, it's a, an empty record that was transported on a truck next to Metallica. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's a, Osmosis. They, they, left, they left the Petri dish out overnight over James Hetfield's house, and in the morning... <laughs> The, the penicillin in the middle, they use that to make Metallica. But it's yeah, like, they said to the yeah. guy, yeah, we just need that. And he was like, okay, how much do you need? And they never told him. So he just started oh jamming God. out Metallica instrumentals and never stopped because it's shocking. All yeah. of the music in this game, like every single encounter has unique audio to it. You can't tell because it all sounds... Yeah, it, rumor is this guy is still playing to this day. 
Yeah, no. Yeah, that guy <laughs> they never took him. That. Every time <laughs> you, stopped. every time you load up a legendary, he actually gets a, a red live light <laughs> on. Uh, <laughs> And he has to play while you're playing. It's groundbreaking technology, but nobody's talking about it because the game sucks. <laughs> He's like Desmond in Lost. He just <laughs> sees the numbers like, oh, a guy in Witcher's hair is wanna... legendary. And he's like, oh, shit. And he like he it runs just... into the recording room and he's like, it kills me. <laughs> <In a, laughs> the, the one thing that you can say that's I was about to say the one thing that's good about Legendary, and I, ca- I caught myself. You, you, you have about, you sung on that. Right? Um, the one thing that is about Legendary. The one, <laughs> one of the many things about Legendary that is true um, <clears throat> is that it does have a pretty cohesive identity. I don't... Yes. It, like, it's not a good identity, but it has it. It's it's like cohesive and it's very confident. It this is, is f- overconfident in like how it presents. And that I wish more games were as confident oh. in their good stuff as legendary is in ten thousand percent. Yeah. Like this like when I kind of said like this is this is like prime for a remake, it's because like it's like looking at a dish where somebody's made like a fabulous hamburger. But then the moment you cut into it, you realize that it's like a plastic bag filled with air. It's like from the outside, <laughs> it looks like a proper meal and like really interesting. But then the it's not cake, it, it's a balloon. There is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like the cake meme, but the cake is rotten. It is. <laughs> oh, I want to like it's it's so funny. Like I'm trying to talk about this game like piece by piece but there's yes. just so there's, so there's much a lot. you want to um, you feel you like you have to hop around yeah so like let me let me just let me just give give a, a a few quick things about so the game comes out it's it's end of october beginning of november in 2008 yes all right uh so the in in in, in the box office in oh, the, here's the zeitgeist. The movies. What's happening at the time? What's here's right. the zeitgeist. This is what's happening at the time, right? So, number one at the box office, uh, depending on which release date you're looking at, is either going to be uh, High School Musical three right, or good. Madagascar Escape to Africa. Uh, so that's that's the 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 when the, did that is the audiovisual content and the on the Billboard Top 100 at that time is going to be uh, Whatever You Like uh, by T.I. Or uh, the week before, it's going to be Womanizer by Britney Spears. So, you try it? Nevin, that go, really, please. Something what, that make really, your really, like, constantly trips me up about this game. Yes. It released in November 7, 2008. Yes. Bioshock released in 2007. Yeah. Yes. This yeah. is the like, weird thing. It so like you can you can look at looking at legendary like on its own is one thing. It's very easy to look at this game and go, this is bad, this is bad, this is right. bad, this is bad. But it gets very interesting when you start looking at the things that were probably in development around the same time and that release earlier. Um oh, yeah. Bioshock yeah. is a huge one. I th- I think Halo Reach had already released by this point too. So Reach is twenty ten, um, but I think this okay. ca- this comes out after Halo Three, and I think it comes out the same year as ODST. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's just people it were feels... making good games in the in the mid two thousand. No, no, yeah, no. There's, this there's came out just... the same year as Left for Dead, which does the kind yes. of urban environment monsters fighting against something. A million times better because the gameplay is just so much like. So Bioshock on, on. comes out in 2007, and really, uh, the it, the video game, the FPS zeitgeist becomes the. You have a dude with a with a magic thingy. Um, you have a magic. You have yeah, the hot hands. You have the magic. You have the hands, offhand. Yeah. You have the offhand bullshit that you're doing. And legendary, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, has the the offhand bullshit. It is by far the worst offhand bullshit I have ever seen. <laughs> In a game with offhand bullshit, but it has it. Um, it does have it. It does so, have it. It exists. So, Kevin, just to explain to the people at home, because I also want to see if you remember what it is. Yeah. Do you remember like, what the magic hand does? So, in this you game? got a little meter, right? 
and yes, you, 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 meat, sir. you suck you suck up like globs of ectoplasm that are just kind of floating around in random spots and uh, excuse can, me it's called animus thank you animus. it is called right. animus and you get it for killing <laughs> You get all the monsters killing, that yeah. come out of the Pandora's box, and you can use that. To, of it, I think. You can use that to heal yourself, yes. which is the same button as the absorb button, because we were clearly hurting for buttons, I guess. And <laughs> you could also use it to pulse enemies away as like a good get off me move. It's like yeah. it, it's, it would not be bad if this was like a fighting game character shtick or something like that. But this is, uh, you know, so this the, guy is basically the, the personality of... It's like, imagine if Frank West never saw wars, you know? That's this guy. This it's is like, if, like... This is like if... What they were going for here is if Lara Croft was a boring white dude. Yes. <laughs> that's that's Croft, the whole thing. So the, ma- the main character of this game, Decker, okay, not nothing. Kane... <laughs> What's his name? Deckard. Yeah, but what's his first name? Deckard. He's what's got his, it's a mononym. It's, it's a it's, mononym. It's, it, his his name because I double checked it. Charlie no. Deckard. Fuck Which, off that's no, such no, a sorry, stupid Charles name. Deckard. That was why it was even weirder. It's like why the Chuck Who the Deckard. fuck is called Charles in two thousand and eight? Apart uh, from fucking King Charles, I guess. So it's just <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> So, so the game starts with an unskippable cutscene. Yeah, always and all good, the by the way. Are, good. All, all the all great all the, games start with unskippable cutscenes. Yeah, all the cutscenes in this game are unskippable. Can't Every do single one about it. And Can't all the checkpoints, all the checkpoints are before them. You know what? Hang on. I just realized we like got right into shit talking this game and didn't tell anybody what it really was. No, uh, yeah. um, I'll I'll quickly do that now. And also, Kevin, um, yeah, what were the news events that happened in two thousand and eight as well? Oh, well, I didn't look that up, but I'll look it up uh, now. No, don't bother then. <laughs> no, that's fine. We, if we did the films and we did the music, that's all we need. That's I did, okay. You know what? No, I oh, already got it. I, I got it up. It's uh, the large uh, the Large Hadron Collider is inaugurated in Geneva in nice. October. That's, uh, that's you know, something that makes Bobby Broccoli happy. He, he talks about that stuff all the time. It makes me happy. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, Barack... Uh, uh, Barack Obama was uh, elected uh, president of the United States only a few days before this game came out. Is that wow. are they coincidence? related? Coincidence? When, yes. When he this is my new. Door. This is my. This is my new favorite extremely niche uh, conspiracy theory. Barack it's... Obama developed and published legendary under a pseudonym. <laughs> okay, if it like wasn't that. for Gamecock and their 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 game oh, legendary, fuck, we haven't Barack even... Obama would not be president of the United oh States. That's, we haven't that's... even mentioned who Gamecock are yet. Or we haven't even mentioned oh God. James. Go I'll for do this. I'll go do this for as the, quickly as possible. Give though, us the, the thing, rundown of what what this the thing yeah, I wanted thing to quickly is. say though, because it was such a great point that you were making earlier. This game comes out the year after Bioshock. Call of Duty Modern Fucking Warfare, the one of the greatest FPS games of that era. The game that sets I think like a lot of the games we're gonna be covering for Bullet Time are like we we have to make this like Call of Duty like mo- like modern warfare because it's the biggest thing. And they end up kind of shooting themselves on the foot doing that. Comes out the year after Crisis, the year after Halo 3. <sighs> fucking like Oh my god. It's like what the what the fuck happens? With the game it, the the game itself is like as run of the mill first person shooter as you can get. It is you got a guy, you got some guns, and you have like five different varieties of enemy, including or and like two or three different types of dude. Um, yes. It is, oh, yeah. uh, like Kevin was describing earlier, the, the whole gimmick of this game is that you've got a fucked up magic hand that sucks up uh, mythological Health juice, juice yeah. um, and you can use that juice to heal yourself or to pop outwards. Um, that pop can stun enemies, it can disable their self-healing, it can make them damageable. Um, and aside yeah. from that, like that's what this game is. It is yes. a point A to point B, not a corridor shooter, um, no, but 
It has, uh, it has sometimes very, it does arenas, sometimes it does corridors, sometimes it does like sometimes it throws puzzly stuff. Throws backtracking at you for no reason. Yeah. Um you go and you interact with stuff and you it's basically a game of getting to the next thing to hit interact on. Um Yeah. The whole appeal of this game was supposed to be you're fighting these cool mythological creatures in urban environments and you're going to fight a lot of mythological creatures. Now, the way they marketed that was there's going to be a wide variety. That is not the case. There's maybe, like I said, five and you fight them. You fight a lot of these five. Uh Um, And on the surface, like I can't get over this. The pitch of fighting weird monsters in new york is so sick it's brilliant Um, yeah but they don't deliver on any of the potential brilliance there even like the idea of using the animus and stuff like that could be very cool yeah if there was anything else to it yeah but it just boils down to you're going to be shooting a lot of things with unsatisfying guns in brown environments that all look the same (laughs) yeah um (laughs) Uh-huh. I even, no interesting you, parts of New York, just the subway. No, and it doesn't <laughs> feel it's, like it's the New, New York. York. You well, you start in New York, and then oh, immediately yeah. you're in <laughs> London for like the rest of the game, and yeah, then you come London, back to New New York for the very end of it. I think. Yeah, I think that's right. It's fucking and, bizarre. You go to New York, but you you don't see Times Square. You don't see the Statue of Liberty. You don't. Like any of the like the recognizable landmarks in New York, I don't even think you're in the Smithsonian. Like they try and uh, you're like, in the Smithsonian a museum. Isn't a pro- yeah, you're yeah. in a museum. That's it. And it's like okay, it's, fair enough. It truly does just fuck me up. <laughs> How hard the ball was dropped, um, Kevin. You mentioned earlier. Yeah. Um, None of these characters are interesting. None of these characters have personalities. And that is fully correct. This is like in the era of silent protagonist. Right. It's Half Life um, 2. But it yeah. was it was in that part of Silent Protagonist where like they still want it to seem like it's a character that that people are talking to. So people right. talk to Deckard as if he can respond to things. And whereas in Half Life you stay in first person and it's like Okay, they're talking to me. Right. I just don't have anything to say back. People ask Deckard questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People people <laughs> ask him like, "Oh, what are you doing here?" and and, and he like emotes and reacts and it's incredibly I'm awkward Deckard. and I don't think <sighs> for a guy with no personality, I sure do fucking hate him. Yeah, he's <laughs> oh, yeah. a piece of shit. <laughs> he so, sucks. One thing with this as well is that like you know when they say that, like, the stories that you should write about a character, like, this should be, like, the most interesting thing that happened in their life or whatever. You know, it's not, like, great advice, but that's, like, you know, I can kind of understand where they're coming from for, like, writing a movie. This should be the most exciting story that happens to them. Before the game starts, the fucking, like, the VO is telling you, oh, this guy's, like, a notorious, like, art thief and cat burglar. And it's, like... Why aren't I playing that game instead of this, where he's literally a schmuck who puts his hand in a fucking box, gets the magic hand, and then the rest of the game is, ah, shit, I gotta go through subway tunnels, because it's pretty, you know, it's pretty crazy up there. It's pretty crazy, I should... I don't really want to go up on the streets, I just want to hide in the subway. A a guy who cannot jump until the game tells you to jump. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That that drove me insane. I was like, is there no jumping in this game? They're like, wait a minute. There might as well not be any jumping. Yeah. No, like the jumping in this is the jumping exists in this because Halo has jumping, Half Life has jumping. Deckard can jump jumping. three inches vertically or fifty feet longwise. Yes, why? <laughs> oh my god, that that led to towards the. Oh my god, there's so many. I'm trying to decide where I want to jump next. My brain is being pulled in 15 different directions about things to yell about this right is, now. This is like reading a Wikipedia article of, like, you see something fucking weird and it's like, wait, what's that? And you, like, you end up down another rabbit hole. Like, that's it's, what this game does to you. It, 
talking about this game, I'm going to take the Wikipedia analogy. It's like reading a Wikipedia article, but you've got a virus that scrolls up and down randomly in websites. <laughs> it's, it's that Korean there's, creepypasta where they grab the, um, they grab the thing oh and pull it down. God, there's just... I... Nevin, go off. Go I tell can't, us. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna spoil legendary. That's fine. Oh, no. Watch no. out. People I shouldn't can't. play legend. Um, spend your time wisely. Spend your time no, no, and no. money wisely no, no, no. on legendary. People better play legendary. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. God damn it. Um there's just so many instances of just dog shit level design too. And I think what I what I want to focus on right now is the animus thing right it's a cool idea you kill yeah. things and you get health that you can use later it's like a you you kill things to get a resource the thing yeah. is the game will often put you in sequences of just normal dudes just guys who look like they're in judge dread cosplay well no they're and in like the, leather fetish gear it's bizarre I couldn't stop thinking that they looked like judges from Okay, from okay, Judge yeah, Dread. I can see that with They the got head. the big shoulder yeah. pads, they oh, got yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But because um, it was because they had like the bare arms and it was like uh -huh, it was just uh -huh. like all black shiny like latex. Mm. I was like okay, It's really kinky. Just, it's yeah, really it kinky. is. Um, the kink so anyways, so the, the <laughs> <laughs> So the game will just like you'll have a sequence where you're fighting like a mix of them. A lot of mm -hmm. the times, which is something that's cool. Like, and the cool thing is, conflicting that they, enemies didn't happen a lot. Like werewolves no. fighting Judge Dread, you don't see yeah. that in every game. Um, but the thing is, humans do a lot of damage mm. to uh -huh. you with guns. Yeah. So, oh. especially towards the end of the game, what would happen is you'd be locked in a room. For like 10 minutes, like just making progress against just humans and mm -hmm. be unable to heal. Right. Because there's there's no boys and humans don't drop animus because we're no. not mythological creatures. Duh. Duh. Um, Duh. There's no consideration for that. But in some parts of the game, they'll put little orbs of animus around for you yeah. to find and suck up. Yeah. But they just like forgot to for a lot of encounters. So some of the later game combat, like... You get to the end of the game. It's like the last level of the game. The whole thing you're doing is going up the big bad's tower. His name is LeFay before you yes. try to pop quiz me. Um, <laughs> a fucking bad guy who's given... They just talk to him like, oh no, LeFay's... Who the fuck is LeFay? Anyway, LeFay right, yeah. has got it. Tower. He's, he's the bad guy. He's, a, he's gonna do it. He's gonna, he's gonna do get the him. thing. Um... New York's You're already in ruins, climb. but he's going to do something else. <laughs> he wanted you to open the box. Actually, opening the box was good. It wa Even though, like, him opening the box is just such a fucking <laughs> stupid thing of, like, oh, I'm just going to put my hand in this thing that looks like a hand. What a great idea. Just, like, yeah, you're the, this you're the decorated... stupidest fucking cat burglar who ever lived. Like, what Chuck the fuck? Chucky boy has never watched a horror movie in his life. We can establish no. this. He's too but busy uh, uh, cat burglaring. He's and, he's too busy stealing art and kissing girls. He's, he's too busy <laughs> not talking. Listen, but letting people, Chucky people Deckard him. does two things: steal art and bang hot babes. And that is yeah, yeah. That's and he's it. all and out of hot babes. Of those things in this game. That you don't see either of these previous, in this game. previous stories. <laughs> so. You going to LaFay's Tower. <laughs> yeah. And I'm at half health because I just got done fighting a bunch of dudes and there's no animus juice. Help there's no yeah. there's no juice anywhere. And what do they do? They spawn two fucking minotaurs, the hardest to kill oh, monsters God. in the game. So I I spent maybe an hour trying to beat the second to last encounter of this game, and I, I was basically kiting these dudes in a circle, just unloading on them, and then dying, because yeah. minotaurs do a lot of damage. But I got yeah. through that, got yeah. up to the actual final encounter, after, you know, going through some hallways, um, in a in a better game, this would have been a very cool sequence, actually. Sure. sure. Yeah. Um, and you get to the last sequence, and you have to start at point A, go to points B, C, and D, and then to point E, interacting with things. 
All the while, enemies are endlessly spawning, and there's no healing items, and everybody has guns that does a shitload of damage to you. Yeah. Werewolves are spawning, and you can kill them, and each point you interact with gives you some healing stuff. But if you die, you go back to the very beginning of that. Oh, fucking great. And Love that. On some on some runs of that encounter, it takes like 20 to 30 minutes to get through it because you have to be so careful. Yeah. Right. In a... It, what this game has taught me genuinely about game design, and it, it's very interesting to look back that like a lot of the stuff we take for granted now, people just didn't know to do. It's like yeah. nowadays, if you were to do a combat encounter like that, you would probably have a checkpoint after each point you yeah, interact. Each with. thing would be a checkpoint. Oh, you'd, and ha- there oh, you'd be- have like maybe like a little health pull. You know, if you have a central room that you return to. Maybe you have a couple of resources there that are always there, and it gives players the choice of, well, do I take a resource now, or do I, like, save it till later? Exactly. You know, you, but, yeah. and there, not this there, game. As you progress in there, like, you get more and more points of health to go. You're basically blowing up tanks of Animus. And right. you have to go back and, like, gather it up. But then you're backtracking when you should be pushing forward. Yeah. And when you backtrack, more guys are allowed to spawn because you're outside yeah. of the radius. So you get back to them and you take more damage and you have to go back again. I want to say that the endless spawning is, um, it's like, I don't know where they got I don't know where they got off on this idea. <laughs> where the hell do you get off? Where the hell do you get off on the idea of endlessly spawning enemies is good? Because, like, even even let's let's take it back. Let's take it back to let's take it back to like the ni- 1992 and 1993. You know, your first you get you got your Wolfenstein's, you got your Dooms, and yeah. throughout the 90s, your FPSs almost. Most FPSs, good FPSs you can think of, enemies don't spawn endlessly. There's a finite no. number in a level. You just have to, like, and actually it's a challenge to kill them all, you know? It, you, no. Some of them some were like, hey, you can, but, like, there are moments in Legendary where I'll be, I, would, I would be in a room and I was like, oh, this is just like an arena thing. I just got to kill all these guys and then I'll be able to move on or whatever. And it was like, no, nope, the werewolves... The werewolves just keep being pooped out of the wall somewhere. Uh, hey, yeah, they'll just keep coming from absolutely <laughs> They'll enough. just keep showing up. Because here's the thing, like, I don't mind a game that does, like, constantly respawning enemies if it's, like, in service of something. Like, you know, like the Call of Duties and, like, uh, you know, uh, Medal of Honor does it because it's trying to... You may be in a cutscene or, like, a set piece where they just keep coming over the line and it's like, shit, what do I do? And it's meant I mean, to, like, like, build tension. Yeah. Like but, Halo Reach. Halo Reach, Need perfect example of the final part more. of that. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. it's fantastic. But then this game is like, well, we're not really sure what to do. And like the perfect example of that was mm. the, oh, fuck. That's what I mean. It, it feels like the Wikipedia thing of like, I immediately now want to talk about. So there's a warehouse puzzle where you need to figure out how to climb up. And right. at no point in this, it's the I bad FBI. about this. <laughs> I completely bad, it's forgot. The, it's the bad FPS thing of like, because of, your field of vision, you only see so much. And throughout the game so far, it's mostly just been a shooting gallery, which is okay, fair enough. There's a lot of games that are like that. But then it goes, <laughs> right, progress up this tower. And it's like, well, how the hell do I do that? Movement speed on the left and right axis, super speedy. Up and down, though, really slow. So you barely ever look up. And I push my cat. I, well, I had to end up looking up the fucking solution to this because I'm stuck in a room <laughs> with constantly spawning werewolves. And it's like, okay, mm-hmm. they want to give me health for something, but I have no idea what. I look it up and they go, oh, there's a chain in the room. And I'm like, where? I look up and just the dimmest glow on an object to try and, like, you know how, like, in Bioshock, the, the thing that you have to interact with is like, fucking is bright gold and it has yeah. like twinkling sound effects on it you can't miss it they do that here but it's like like the slowest <laughs> so pulse and it's like how the fuck too, like it was it i feels meant to like, about it it feels like so many ideas that this game had they forgot how to do them well because <laughs> it, it start the very beginning of the game they say sometimes you'll have to destroy things in the environments and you can do this for fun and profit um, yeah. but not everything's and destructible even the stuff that should be there's maybe like four instances 
I'm exaggerating. There's been like a few instances throughout the game of being able to destroy something to, get, to gain an advantage in combat. And yeah. there's three times that I can think of where you have to shoot a thing to make progress. And yes. two of them are right next to each other at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the other one's at the beginning when it tells right you. Right at the beginning. And then there is hours <laughs> where you don't have to worry about that. And it's bizarre because it is like... This, this game is... <laughs> yes, yeah, and this game, I mean... This game, like, we, you could almost make a bingo sheet of, like, bad FPS, like, you know, don't do this in your FPS game. But the fact that, like, the level design in this game is so shit that they give you a waypoint. In a game that's, like, that's meant to be, like, fucking Half-Life 2, they give you a waypoint button because it's just, like, oh, you're probably not going to know where to go, so just click that and we'll tell you. Yeah. It's like, I feel, really? I feel like... I feel like the waypoint thing... And the destroying things in the environment. And so much of the rest of this game is there because it's what other games were doing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, it's like, oh, this is a this is a cool idea. Let's do that. Let's have a waypoint just in case people get lost. Yeah. Um, but because everything surrounding those is bad, having a waypoint feels like an excuse for bad level design. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's, yeah, it's absurd. There was a <laughs> Wikipedia jumping. Here we go. Okay. Um, click those links. Our, <laughs> I'm clicking the links. We're going deeper. Uh, <laughs> we were talking earlier about how bad Chucky's uh, ups are. Chuck's yeah. got bad ups. He can't He's jump for shit. Can't jump. There's a, another section at the end of the game um, where a helicopter spawns. Right. Um, we're familiar with helicopter sequences. You run down the hall as things are shooting into the windows. It's super cool, then, yeah. right? Hop onto the helicopter. And it's dope. Yeah. yeah. I died to this fucker 10 times because I was trying to jump over a couch. <laughs> All I had to do was hide around the corner until he stopped shooting and left. I mean, of course, you know. Uh, yeah, of course. You know, oh, of course. Like, That's what? Think, thinking about it, if it's I'm like, going to put on it's my like, video game realism hat, yeah. of course I would just hide until a helicopter left. But I got a juice hand. Let me yeah. jump over a fucking you, couch. You assume Chucky could handle a little parkour if the, the situation demanded it. The fact is, he can't. He is in terrible <laughs> shape. He, the only He's thing that's never. <laughs> He he, he actually the, he can't see it. He has a cigarette in his mouth the entire time. He's the, <laughs> yeah. the one the one art thief who's never had to run from cops in his he's life. So <laughs> he's he so good. He's so good. Small towns, yeah. Really. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have to run from cops. He he walks because he's it's like oh, he oceans eleven himself out as the cop with the the there art in his hands. Yeah. He's he is Danny Ocean without so any charm. Fucking stupid. <laughs> the way. Wait, the way the game ends. Let us know. Okay, just tell people. Just let us know. If anything, this may make inspire somebody to be like, how the fuck does a game like that end? Listen, I everyone. I want to play this to find out. Nevin uh, is about to spoil 2008. 2008's <laughs> Legendary by Gamecock. Uh, what a oh, fucking we still haven't even name. fucking talked about oh, Just Nevin, tell us. Then we have to talk about Tell us, how does this oh. bad boy end? How does it, so how does it land the plane? The, you get through the final encounter, and <laughs> this boss fight is the only time you see LeFay. Right. And he's in a room hitting buttons and yelling at you about how dumb you are and As about how bad his employees are. Um, you overload Pandora's box and it explodes. Um, LeFay gets thrown onto a spike by a griffin and then falls all the way down his tower into the void. You don't see him dead, so keep that in mind. Pandora's box blows up. You survive. The one named military guy comes up to you and is like, oh, Deckard, you lived. Wow, how the fuck? What the fuck? Um, And then he pulls out a syringe and goes... We've got to study the signet. Can't I can't risk asking you nicely to help us. And he knocks you out with the fucking syringe. OK, then it cuts to the, the art mode, you know, when they're doing the motion comic shit. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. 
And it's just that the girl, there's a woman in this game. Yeah, you meet the woman for a little <laughs> bit, and she's just like, I'm surprised you're still they alive. Fridged her. You're going to have to go to London. They fucking <laughs> threw her in a fridge. They threw what? her in a fridge. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's a t- it's a it's a trope. When you fridge oh, something, oh, they, oh, they you fridged, introduce oh, right, it and then you, you put it away. Right, right, they right, fridge yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, um, they fucking did, didn't they? Yeah. And it's her saying like, "Oh wow, they were dicks, and they didn't even ask Deckard. Good thing he escaped." Credits roll. Ah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I want the, I want to exist in the universe where we got. L- Legendary you need two to electric boogaloo. Yeah, like what the fuck? Um, nowadays, if Legendary had released nowadays, we would have gotten DLC. Oh yeah. god, yeah, we would have got a Sura's Wrath where they actually add the ending on in DLC. Oh my god. god. Um, can I ask? Is the credits? Um, is the music over the credits? Mm-hmm. Okay, or is yeah, it Benny no, Hill I, music? I, I thought, I thought which it might would be much be. worse. It's, uh, the actual. I actually wanted to talk about the credits real quick. Yeah, go too. for it. So, and this this will segue into Gamecock and who. Yeah, they this are. will segue into so, Spark Unlimited, which I feel like we we need to touch on on a tiny bit. Yeah, let's the, talk about them. The credits for uh, Legendary are three hundred and uh, three hundred and eighty people. I have them pulled up right wow, now. Wow. Okay. Two hundred and seventy three developers. A hundred and seven special thanks. Wow. In the special thanks section, everyone, almost everyone, has a nickname. Um, I sent you one of these nicknames. You did, yeah, fucking, um. Uh, I got it wrong, unfortunately. Oh, that's but okay. It's, it's Jake Animus Pants Eaton. Animus no Pants? One, no one Animus. called this guy Animus Pants. There's some other good ones in here, too. Uh, Pillow Lips. Um. <laughs> what do we got? Taco Tour. Uh. Hey, Johnny Fuckface uh, over there. <laughs> but that's uh, what I mean. Like, a dick name is usually like, Pippin. oh, they call they call him Sniffles because he always has like a blocked nose. Nobody's going, ah, all oh, animus pants over there. And well, it's because it's like, it's he's got the he's got the healing juice between his between Yo, his, he's between got, his legs. Yo, he's, yeah. Yeah, no. He just walks into the office, and his trousers are just like constantly sparking. Because you, oh, you suck up the animus. It's, <laughs> it's so yeah. bad. You suck uh, up the there's animus. Another, there's one in here in that I think pants. is very funny. Um, yeah. They they named an individual, and then in parentheses they say, "Someday I'll play one of your games." <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that and man got was Phil Fish. The the last thanks. The last thanks in here is my annoying siblings, and then it lists the siblings. And okay, then cool. All the homies and all my special lady friends. Wow. That sounds about right for this game. I can't. I w- this game I, wants to be a wants to be a cool dude in a leather jacket. I was so going bad. to say this the way that I the way that I just I mean I I gave this a meaner name to other people, but I, the way that I would describe this game is that. It's stupid Half Life, as in, yeah. what's all the cool things that like, like like a like a football jock would like? And it's like, yo, I've been reading about like these myth, these like mythical creatures. Yo, I've like, been reading about minotaurs shit. Yo, imagine, and shit. Yo, imagine it's I just like minotaurs. I bet minotaurs play really good football, dude. I'd love to yo, shoot um, them with, yo, the, with a fucking just like, saw. You know, if you imagine you were like Mercury's like Sam Fisher, but you were fighting like werewolves. What the fuck, man? That wouldn't that be so fucking dope? And it's like, yeah, it would. But, it, but it's, it's stupid half like also in regards to like again, this game is like my ver- favorite version of this trope, which is something that I'm coining now, but we talk about it in another episode, which is jobbers. And you know exactly uh, what yes. I mean in regards to. So yeah. you know, in Half Life, they have. Oh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Freeman, I'm going to run off ahead. And then, like, they'll get attacked Die. by a head crab or they'll get sucked mm-hmm. up by a mollusk. And that's the game designer. T- you know, like, you you feel like you hear the game designer at Half-Life on the commentary track going, so we use NPCs like this to warn uh, players about stuff that could be coming up ahead. And it shows them, you know, what will happen if you get attacked by it as well. This game does the fucking jobber thing once every 15 seconds. <laughs> 
They're you, everywhere. You fucking you meet oh up with God. a a black ops guy who go, oh Deckard, you're alive, thank God. Hey, stick with us. Strength in numbers, all right. You've They're never seen him of, before. Yeah, never You've seen. Never him before. met this man. That you will meet up with NP- you you meet up with an NPC like a brand new NPC every fifteen fucking seconds, and they walk off ahead and they will like a piece of debris will fall on their head. The fucking frog guys will barf lava on them. They'll just get fucking sucked up by a tentacle. Just Werewolves. it happens so often. And then you you are in a firefight and you go into another room and there's another fucking guy who goes, "Oh my god, I'm so glad that you were able to survive that on your own." But hey, stick with me, okay? And we'll uh, and then. Yeah. Again and again and again. And Stick it with me, buddy. I've also survived on my own thus far. Yeah. Let's work hey, together. Hey, what's this thing on the floor? Kaboom! I'm. De- it's it's like the naked gun. <laughs> it's like literally. It, it was like if there'd be like a fucking Domino's row of hundreds of guys just getting like offed in all these different ways, but they all say, "Oh, thank God, Deckard, you 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 able you were able to survive that." <laughs> oh, by the way, so- Deckard, you're the coolest dude ever. Yeah, By the way, so cool. hey, and we're not going to tell you off for fucking opening Pandora's box. They fucking forgive him for that pretty quick. So, hey, Deckard, and, you're really cool and hot. Can I have a smooth show? No, also, a werewolf. Yeah, <laughs> no, a werewolf. James, James, James. What? Yes. Tell us about Gamecock. Right. Well, first things first, I'm going to tell you about Spark and Limited, who are the people who made this game. And I just up front, I just want to say that like. I obviously on the podcast we're not really going to dunk on developers or anything because like there's all sorts of things that went into like you know budgets and stuff like that but this is a really interesting case because like their first game was a fucking Call of Duty title they ported Call of Duty 1 from the PC to consoles as finest hour so like that's pretty and like it's the highest rated game as well that's a pretty that's a fucking pedigree. Like, they're the guys who brought Call of Duty to console. So, like, the game that's going to define shooters for the next two decades. But after that, they contracted to do two games. One which is this, and another one which is called Turning Point Fall of Man. Which, again, is another... It's not quite urban fantasy, but it's set in New York. And the whole point is... Um, the concept is, what if the Nazis were winning World War Two? And they invaded New York. And so you have this really interesting opening where it's, you see like blimps for swastikas on the side of them come into New York. You're like, you're welding on the side of like a fucking tower. And so you just see all this New York iconography getting attacked by Nazis. And then the game is exactly like legendary as in cool opener immediately turns to shit. There's, like, no interesting and, stuff to it. And um, Legendary uh, advanced this formula by just getting rid of the cool opener and being shit immediately. Uh, yeah. <laughs> both of these games, though, are rated, like, they're both, like, 50% on Metacritic, and they're just, like, cool. I keep tapping my mic because I'm so excited. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> excited just, or furious? A little bit of both. I'm excited because I'm furious, and I'm furious because I'm excited. Um... But somehow, like, they both put these games out and people are like, cool concepts, but these shooters are mid as fuck. They don't, like, they don't feel good to play. There's nothing interesting in them. And then, for some fucking reason, Capcom hands them the keys to the kingdom. Because, do you, so you mentioned Phil Fish earlier, Kevin, which is so weirdly prescient, because, and I'll do this as quickly as possible, because it's not totally to do with the game, but it is like a weirdly interesting bit of history, and especially for these guys. So in 2010, Kenji Inafune, who's the Mega Man guy, but he's also like a pretty big cheese in Capcom. Like he, like he's responsible for Dead Rising and stuff, which is like this big hit that they managed to have in the HD era, and it's like a new original IP. He's at Tokyo Game Show, and he says, Japan's dead. Like all the developers here... They they can't make good games anymore. You got to go west. That's where all the good games are being made. And that like, Phil Fish said something similar, which is like you know, Japanese games industry dead. Everything's moving over west, which is such a weird thing to say at the time. And like since then, they've both been kind of proven wrong, and you know whatever to that. But Capcom were being squeezed. Like, well, I mean, it was the HD era, and we had just we were about to go for a fucking financial crash. So it's like okay. Right. Let's look at Western developers and see what we can do. Spark Unlimited are given... They do Lost Planet 3, which again, mm-hmm. Lost Planet is this new... 
it's a HD franchise that they make in that era. It does pretty well, and so they get the keys to the kingdom on the third one. And they make a fucking Ninja Gaiden game. This venerated series, like, there's really, you know, it's always been quite niche, but it's like, you know, it's Team Ninja's baby. But they put them on it, and they're like, we want you to make the American Ninja Gaiden. And both of these games are notorious flops. They're both, like, 20 (laughs) percenters. On Metacritic, and it's like, the, so... and, it, and it boils, and it boils down to like they just both these games didn't have the budget they needed, they didn't have like the talent on it that they needed, and so both those games fuck up, and um, poor um, Spark Unlimited they're closed the next year. Those developers so, go off elsewhere. But uh, so Gr- Grant Kirkhope, by the too. way, did the score for that Ninja Gaiden game. Oh God, really? Yeah. Uh huh. It's oh, wow. it's so unfortunate too because like looking at this Ninja Gaiden game, it's actually kind of fucking sick, like mm. aesthetically. Yeah, it's it's very cool. It's kind of like the 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 newest Prince of Persia. Yeah, it's slightly cel shaded. It has kind of like an American mm. comic book look to it, it's, and like it's in motion, very it looks comic really neat. Book. It, I'm looking at it right now. It's very cool, and it's also very self aware and tongue in cheek and like a B movie. I'm here for it. And, yeah. and Lost Planet is like kind of a, a cult classic. Like that's Lost another Planet is one. Cool. We might we might Lost talk Planet's about great. Lost Planet here at some point, but it'll be I, one of those things where it very much skirts the line of missing its mark because I think the trilogy did like relatively well, but mm-hmm. it's just this third one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just kind of so. Like that's the weird Spark, thing about yeah. Spark Unlimited has like a weird history. They have great ideas, but they never quite nail the execution, mm-hmm. which I think is a shame. Gamecock, on the other hand, is a completely different thing, which is <laughs> so. Gamecock is founded is by a, it's founded by a guy called Mike Wilson, who he gets his start being in the marketing department for it. So, fucking the reason why Doom is a mega success as it is is because they lean very much into the heavy metal album cover side of it. You know the fact that. This is this is a game you're never gonna you've never played before. This game is gonna tell your parents to go fuck themselves and you know all that sort of stuff. And it's like, right. damn, this guy knows what he's talking about. And from there, he kind of sticks around with those guys. Mike Wilson is the guy who coins for fucking Daikatana, John Romero is gonna make you his bitch. The fucking famous poster that comes out. The most notorious thing of that game is that was a Mike Wilson right. idea. But he leaves it and he forms a developer called Gathering of Developers and they publish a couple of things. They go under because they published the guy <laughs> game, which was uh, this... Ah, the guy? You mean the game for guys? Yeah, the game for guys. The PS2 game, which was full of clips of like scantily, scantily clad women, which they had to remove from store shelves because one of the girls turned out to be underage. Oh my so, God. Wow. Yeah, wow. fucking, uh, yeah, that, 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 that was what brought the end to gathering of developers. He then goes on and forms Gamecock, which is, we, we have this anarchic rock and roll spirit to us to the extent that um, Ken Levine wins an award at some game ceremony and they storm on stage while he's giving his speech dressed in chicken costumes and they're like dunking on him. And like all the games they want, all the games they want to So, Mike Wilson then, after, because Gamecock's only around for two years, fucking Legendary was what they bet the farm on. Like, this was meant to be the AAA game that was going to fund all their smaller projects, because they also published, like, Delirium the Ward, which was this cool Nintendo DS first-person horror game. They published um, Mushroom Men, which was, like, this Wii action game where Les Claypool did all the soundtrack for it. But legendary was meant to be the big like like an ea style that's like the big fifa was, project that funds yeah everything to else. borrow to borrow a term from blank check it was supposed to be the guarantor for the exactly. rest of their their blank checks so to speak uh except it never guarantored <laughs> no so with mike, mike wilson. wilson they wrap up game Cop not the beach boy not the Beach Boy, no, because fucking this game, Legendary, was meant to be the guarantor. This was the big AAA game that was meant to fund all the other stuff. That mm-hmm. goes tits up, so Gamecock only exists for two years. 
the year afterwards, him and the people who formed Gamecock go off and form Devolver. And wow, yes. So wow, all that, kind of, all that kind of anarchic spirit and sort of like uh, you know, we're not going to be like regular publishers. We're going to publish stuff that's cool. They figure that out with Devolver, but I think they also figure out we're not really going to do big games now. XBLA and Steam have become these kind of like ecosystems where, oh, let's just mm-hmm. focus on small stuff because it's less, you know, it's less, less of a risk. I'm yeah. sorry, I have to yeah. apologize. I just put Mike Love and Brian Wilson together and said Mike Wilson was a beach boy. <laughs> and that's that's on me. Uh, I, I, for for all you Brian Wilson think- fans out there, I'm very sorry. Continue. Whenever, I, whenever, <laughs> for some reason, whenever I say Mike Wilson, my brain wants to like, you know, on a phone auto completes, and it's like, oh, do you mean duck off? Um, my brain auto, <laughs> like, my brain auto completes it to Mike Jones, the fucking Houston rapper, which nobody's thought about in about ten years. But sure, wow, deep cut. Yeah, Nevin, have you got any thoughts on uh, Mike Jones still tipping? So. Legendary is not. <laughs> Legendary is a bad game. Legendary is bad. It's bad. Can we talk about like, monsters quick? Uh, no, Nevin, go ahead. You you got a I good would, point coming here. I would like for it to be good, but it's bad. No, <laughs> that I would is like good ga- bad games to be good too. <laughs> Can we talk about the monsters quickly? Because there's yes. only five of them, and I think what's so funny is that like. They are the five horsemen of the apocalypse of bad <laughs> FPS enemies. Sure. So, werewolves. All right. Why are they a bad FPS enemy? Because you can only because they are bullet sponges, and you can only kill them by doing headshots. If you don't headshot them, they just keep coming back. So, an enemy that is counterpoint. Or you could use the counterpoint. axe to counterpoint. counterpoint. Here it comes. The werewolves are the best thing in this game. Agreed. Which is the were- which is why the werewolves it's are That's legitimately the they are legitimate. I think genuinely the werewolves are cool as hell. Um the designs are cool. <laughs> I who they're who cares cool. if I thought that they and were the, rat people first. I thought they were they were <laughs> I thought they were rat men for a little while. I, I and they're like, oh, they're supposed to be werewolves. Got it. I I love a <laughs> fucked up little freaky guy. We yeah, know this gremlin. about me. I he's love a, a fucking, freaky little guy. And these werewolves are, are fucking wiry, freaky little fuckers. They're just going and in like this great. at you. I feel, no, like, I feel like I would walk into a bodega and a werewolf would be there wringing its hands going, yeah, Hello, could I interest you in some Whoppers <laughs> or Doritos? <laughs> are you, are, and that's are you just be like, can I have um, the Sevizier from like the Top Chef? He's like, of course. And just like his hand. <laughs> just his hand just goes. <laughs> it's like I, out the door I and then back in. Yeah. I legitimately like this take on werewolf design. Um, because the design is cool. The design is very they cool. Suck. I like how they're bouncing on everything. They're climbing on walls. That's they, cool. They feel yeah, I like, like that. An, they feel like a fucking animal, like a powerhouse. Yes. The, they they take yeah. a lot of damage. I I played on easy, and I still had a shit time. I um, also played on easy. I, I was like, not for this podcast. I'm, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna phone it in easy. I, uh, who are you trying switching. to? What are you trying to prove to who? I'm trying you to know? prove that I can finish <laughs> legendary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm <laughs> one third of the people on here has finished this bad video game. Mm-hmm. Um, I I like having to shoot the head off the werewolf when they're dead. I think it mm-hmm. fucking rules. It's like a it's one of the few like thematical things that this game gets right and like executes yeah. on. Um, yeah. And I think that the alpha werewolves, those are the yes. bullet sponge ones. I think those kind of suck. But and as you are shooting them, you do see the meat of the werewolf. And that's that is cool. true. That's a nice touch. Yeah, it's cool. Count- counter counterpoint, though. <laughs> Werewolves. What's the thing that we know about werewolves is that sometimes they're humans, sometimes they're wolves. Ergo, why wasn't that the mechanic? Why weren't they just biting human guys and turning them into werewolves? Shooting a head off a werewolf doesn't feel that. I don't know what law they pulled that from. That's like a that's a zombie thing that you have to remove the head. It's really well, it because nobody has silver bullets, James. 
Okay, fair enough. Yeah, the, no all the silverware got melted down. There's no silver yeah. in New York. It's just yeah. What they that. what see what they actually did is all the silver they were gonna use to make the bullets for the werewolves in the game. They yeah. actually used to make legendary, which was the silver bullet for game. Uh, yep, yeah, there uh, it is. There we go. It was a long walk off a short pier I just took. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you coyote <laughs> timed for like the a funny few, thing is, is for the, like thirty the seconds. Are, the werewolves mm-hmm. are like the enemies that you see 80% of the time in this week because they don't introduce them off the map. The enemies that they introduce first are these fat little toad guys who just like roll around and the go salamanders. like... salamanders! Yeah, yeah, the little salamanders who I like... I love these little salamanders. Dudes. I love them, but you, but then they're gone. You don't see them after that. They're just No, they gone. do. They, they show up throughout the entire game. They're not in London. They are in London. Are you sure? Because I was they in are... London earlier and I wasn't seeing them fat little buggers. And well, I wanted you to. were in real London. You, okay, you walked that, down that's to the where shop. I was going. That's, around, that's, yeah. the, that's the problem. Because, yeah, the um, London in this game the, is like, it's not fucking London. It's like a little <laughs> parish it's town. Not. It, it, it's like some fucking miniature village off the coast, uh, off the fucking M25. It's, it's you not know what London. It is? You know what it is about this game? It's like, you, you ever watch, you ever watch like a network TV show that's quote unquote set in New York, but it's really just the LA it like the, in the studio, the New York street. It's a sound stage. Uh, is, is that, it's sound actually stage. South Africa. It's actually South Africa. It's, 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 it's the sound stage equivalent of video games for New York mm-hmm. and London. Which I which weirdly fits into what we were saying earlier, where it feels like a nineties Chris Columbus film where it's like uh-huh. oh, we're not gonna shoot it in New York. We're just gonna go to the fucking Warner Brothers backlog and build a chunk of New York because it's just easier. I mean, like, Warner Brothers already has that built. They they have they have a they have a New York Street set that they use all the there time. There we go. It's there you con- go. it was constantly used on uh, Seinfeld. Uh, Seinfeld has oh, like God, yeah. Seinfeld was because sh- that wasn't shot in like in on the New York Street. I'm a- imagine just fucking comedies in the nineties going. Yeah, we're just going to use a set. We're just yeah, going to use friends. a fucking lot set for our comedy. Not like we're going to cheap out as much as possible where maybe we'll use... Gr- like the fucking Goldbergs uses Marvel um, Disney Plus green screen to recreate the 80s house because it's just cheaper. It's like, no, yeah, no, no. So yeah, Seinfeld, we're going to... It's going to be like fucking Tim Burton's Batman. We've rebuilt New York right, for the- Seinfeld. <laughs> It's like Goldberg's is like, yeah, it's Philadelphia. Maybe. You know? What does Philadelphia look like? Uh, we but we downloaded all these assets from Turbo Squid. That's what it looks like. It's like it looks like Van Nuys. We went under, the, on. we, we went under <laughs> the Unity store and grabbed a Dunkin' Donuts model. Welcome to our Boston set. <laughs> yeah, that's you what want I a did donkey. Yeah, the London the, in this is not London. I think you you see you do see Big Ben at one point. Oh, you, you have to. I mean, you have to have London. you have to have Big Ben getting fucked up by a kraken. Yeah, of course. I mean, the kraken's going to be in the Thames because that's the other thing that you have to have in the look. If if you, if you want to have London yeah. in a film or TV series, you have to have Big Ben with the with the Houses of Parliament, River Thames, but they're next to each other, so that's fine. Double deck buses. And Buckingham Palace with some guards outside. That's all you need. And then if you want to go for the extra, and the have Kraken. London Calling by The Clash playing over <laughs> shots of London. It's... Why not? It's so funny. It's so fucking bad game. It is... Um, so Salamanders, I like them, but the they're Salamanders like fa- are good. They're cute. Um, the fucking fairy enemies, which... Dog shit. Kevin, Kevin, let's go off on this, because what's the thing that we hate the most? Small... Hard small, to hit, small fast things moving, you can't hit. Yeah, FPS enemies. They if it's are a the... tiny thing and you can't hit it, it's 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 a bad enemy. Especially on a FPS. game which was again, this was an Xbox 360 game. This was designed with controllers in mind. I cannot imagine engaging with these enemies with a control stick. It is shit. The legendary defender has logged on yet again. No, okay, um, Nevin. I play. Talk I actually, there. I actually played this with controller. Uh, because mouse and keyboard sucked shit. The sensitivity was totally fucked on mouse and keyboard. Yeah, the sensitivity is fucked I on the Steam version. I switched to a controller, and for the fairies, you have to use Animus. You have yes. to do the double tap stun in order for it to actually be, like, fightable, which is bad for a different reason. Yeah, that, that's, that's so, bad because that's a resource that you need. That's your resource, and now I have to use it. But you get more of it for killing them, so, like... 
yeah. you know, a, a better game would have done it better. Yeah, is, like, the, the thing that I, I think of is that, to. the thing that I think of is they introduce the fairy enemies around the time that they use that mechanic once, which is, hey, we have these bombs which are powered by your animus juice. So that thing that you use to heal yourself and to push people away. Now, actually, we want you to save that so you can power these bombs in order to finish these mm-hmm. set pieces. Mm-hmm. And the one that I think of is when they're... Because they're EMP... Okay, so, like, the beginning of this game... Oh, God, let's let's quickly, very, very quickly talk about the tutorial of this game. Nothing because, we're doing here is very, very quick. I, I, I'm, <laughs> trying my, I'm trying my best. James, but, like, I'm... <laughs> I, will, I will summarize this and you figure out what bad guy we're talking about next. Um, okay. So the story of this game is your dude opens up Pandora's box and, and then gets whisked around to New York, London, and back to New York, I think. Um, yeah. That's the plot. Going to points and interacting with things. That's like okay. it. They have you interact with various MacGuffins to do various MacGuffin-y things. Sure. You get introduced to the bad guy by a one-off line halfway through the game and then you see him for the first time at the very end of the game right before he gets killed by a Stewie Griffin. There we go. Continue. The tutorial (laughs) is meant to be the thing of, like, it's meant to try and split the difference between Bioshock and Half-Life where it's, like, introducing you into this fabulous world but it's also doing, like, the... Oh no, panics, uh, you know, it's like, it's like day of disaster. It's like, shit, everything's going wrong so you're Mm -hmm. learning while also trying to escape. Uh... As Kevin mentioned earlier, you can't jump until they introduce it. You can't sprint until they introduce it. You can't heal yourself until they introduce it. And then they introduce the thing that you're shooting for 70% of the time in this game. The other 30% of the time, their idea of a puzzle is hold the E button. It's great. So oh, it's, you know how oh, they the, say the that picking. some yeah. You know how you know how they say that some lock books picking. are great like page turners. This game is a great cog turner because all you fucking do is stand in place and turn a cog as slowly as possible, oh, and that's cog. Oh, I heard, I heard cock. Sorry, game cocks. <laughs> it, it, game yeah. cocks. Yeah, game, game, that, game you, cock. You really turner. game that cock. You yeah. either turn a cog or you hot wire a panel which has no there's no challenge to it you just hold uh, you hold it as it's, it's, like ani- it's, it's very it's animated funny. as he's like he's like <laughs> yeah. got what it. this had what that had me thinking about was like there was a period of time where so many games had like a hacking mini game and yes. people were complaining about hacking mini games. So yes. I would say another thing this game got right is that it didn't have a hacking mini game. Here's the thing. I wouldn't have that. I absolutely agree with you. Here's my suggestion. Just don't have that. I don't just want to stand no, in place. I agree. <laughs> And just hold the E button to make it. It's it's just bu- it's just busy it's work. Bad. It's just like it's bad. Oh, it, it, I, I I am absolutely convinced that if they remove the bits where you tap metal wires together, the game would only be two hours long. They need You're that right. in order to You're slow correct. it. The fuck it's a solid down. thirty seconds of just staring at this guy. That's because the thing, thirty wires. seconds, two hundred times. That's uh, you know th- that's a good, that's nearly an hour. Hopefully, you know you got that's yeah. Six thousand seconds. Is only, this game is only three hours long. I have seven and a half <laughs> hours in it <laughs> because there's so much of it that's just it's art. There's a lot of artificial difficulty. There is there's bullshit. a lot of bad design. It, it's so much bullshit. It's so bad. So other than the fairies, what else we got? We got Minotaurs. What's the Minotaur? It's the big guy. At the Minotaur, I don't mind too much. He reminds... Whenever I was fighting the Minotaur, it reminded me of something like Painkiller or like those games which mm-hmm. were sort of Doom inspired. Like, Serious yeah. Sam, where it's like, big enemy, dump a lot mm-hmm. of like up mammo into it. Here's the funny thing that I forgot to mention earlier. So you fight the... Um, the reason why the human enemies are so deadly is that they're the only ranged enemies in the game. All of the monsters only fight with melee. For example, mm-hmm. the Minotaur guys, their one attack is run in a straight line towards you because they're balls. Of course they would do that. And so, like, there's the fun thing of, oh, you know, dance around them, get some bullets in on them. Yeah, it's a spongy enemy, but there's a little bit of fun in doing that. And again, like, they destroy walls and whatever. And then the other one is the Griffins, and they work pretty much exactly the same as the Minotaurs. <laughs> they work exactly the same as the Minotaurs, except they deal twice the damage, have three times the health, 
and you only get a way to effectively kill them uh, about 20 minutes after you're first introduced to them, which uh-huh. I, 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 I understand the concept of that is like, let's show you this badass enemy and then power you up with the cool tool to take sure, care of Sure, yeah, yeah. Modern games do that all the time. The problem is, yeah. the problem is, modern games are good. <laughs> yeah, Nevin. Every, did, keep, it, it, Nevin, it, remember it, this came out the year after Modern Warfare, a game which is still it exceptional. Really, it, and it really is just like so. So much of this game, like I have to give it credit. Like it genuinely tried to do a yes. lot of very cool things. I can see so many awesome ideas here in this game, and. Yeah. For whatever reason, budget, time, skill, direction, whatever, mm. it misses the mark in every single regard. This is why I think this is like the perfect bullet time game, because the level of it ideas is. and ambition versus the execution, it is just such a, you want to dissect it and go, how the hell did this, you know, what went wrong and like oh the answers are kind of obvious but it's just interesting mm-hmm. going like what was the potential that they could have gone with versus like what did because like i think we could all like it, it we not the people who have no like development in unit well actually no nevin you are a genuine game designer you know how to make games kind like, of like <laughs> yeah I, 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 same you're an award of, but, winning Game award-winning designer. game designer. Award-winning game it, designer. The, the game Holmes. that you want an award for is about guns. It's not an FPS game, but guns are very much a big. Well, actually, it's a first-person shooter in regards that one of the person people is a gun, so it's from their first-person and, perspective. And the other person is shooting. Well, there we go. So, like, it would be very easy to figure out how would you fix this game, and I feel like it wouldn't be that much of like you would scrap it and start again it's mostly just tweaking the parameters is i yeah i feel i feel like for the most part the issues that this game suffers from could it just needed i i hate this expression but it, it really feels like it just needed more time um in, yeah it needed another and, hour in the oven and or something it's something because it just yeah. there's yeah a sequence i've been thinking about the entire time we've been talking about this that i think kind of like actually whips ass Um, okay after you get to fuck i can't even put this in the game's chronology there's a sequence where you're in a lab and it's the good guy lab you you reach like the council's home base or whatever by the way this game has factions you reach the council's home base of course um and you do you do like a shitty walk and talk and then everything goes wrong and, like, Oops. all of these mythological creatures that they've, like, captured and been studying... They um, escape. They escape. And it's fucking pandemonium. Yeah. And it's legitimately sick. Because... Yeah. I mean, it's good because you don't have to fight anything. Really? You're just walking through it? And it's just pure chaos. People are getting thrown around. Fairies are picking people apart. There's... You can look across the fucking science room and see like three dudes fall off of the catwalk and one of them just like hanging there screaming until a fairy flies over and like pulls him off it's like a it's like that sounds like a a, a cabin in the woods basically yeah 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 yeah, the last the last act of cabin in the woods (laughs) and this is what i mean like I, i i was dunking earlier and saying like this game is full of jobbers but Jobber moments when, like, Half-Life's the fucking perfect example. When a jobber moment works really well, it's great. And that sounds like an example of, yeah, yes. you see the fucking chaos unfolding because these poor jobbers are just getting ripped to pieces by these enemies. It yeah. does actually put into context what they can do. I hate to backtrack, but I've just remembered what the fifth enemy site was because I just said, uh, I guess Griffin's are the other one. But they're all part of the big guys. Those are the big guy enemies. Big sites. dudes, yay. I forgot Woo. the fucking enemies who are like little ticks that come out of a big blood bag and they're exactly the same as the fairies where they're small and annoying to hit but they explode and they They spawn infinitely until you take out the blood bag yeah Mm -hmm. they fucking suck you gotta find the testicle and shoot it yeah you gotta find their nest the testicle nest and fucking blow it up i'm really bummed i didn't get to that part yeah there's 
there's a level Bums. at the end um, <laughs> where there are the testicles and you have to shoot and pop those, but also they're coming out of vents infinitely and you yeah. have to find a you have to open a gas valve and then pick up a flamethrower and shoot at the vent to stop them from spawning cool yeah. cool how did you figure that out <laughs> for I, trial and error i guess uh i i looked up okay okay fair enough <laughs> i was i was interacting with these wheels and it was like these aren't doing anything where the and fuck then- are these takes coming from Oh, oh. oh. It is, it's a place where I usually don't look. Usually, Valve they have they give you a, they give you a reason to look up. They point a light the at time. It. Yeah, yeah, they're really good at making people look mm-hmm. up in mm-hmm. games. You got to give a reason to look. Uh, I mean, if there's no reason to look up, people just don't look up. That's why you have to I, like say I, look up to people because otherwise they're not like, going to do it. I feel like we've been really really mean here today. <laughs> <laughs> this game Sorry, this I game just, is really boring though. I I want to I, I I need to I need to inject positivity into this. Okay, game. Let's, let's do. Let's, let's inject you, some positivity. You have, you have some time to uh, uh plead the case for legendary. Go for oh, it. I'm not going to plead the case for legendary. This game sucks. Okay. Um, this okay. game's going to jail. This game's going to prison. <laughs> um <laughs> Um Something to note is that everyone, when they're working on something like game design, yes. starts somewhere. I have yes. no idea how long the team who worked on this had been working on game design. No. But whether they were fresh faces or had been at it for a very long time, if they're still designing games, they've probably gotten better. Um, of course. So to to the listener, if you are working on something... Every now and then you're going to make a something that's bad, whether you make YouTube videos, video games, tabletop games, music, art, whatever. You're going to make a thing that's bad sometimes, and you shouldn't let a bunch of nerds on a podcast stop you from doing no, that. No, absolutely not. People should be allowed to make mistakes. And I think in and regards honestly, to Legendary, yeah. we, d- we want to like this game. This game it's has just, got a lot of cool elements to it, but it just drops the... And I, and I think it's okay to just be like, yeah, this fucking sucks, man. But, you know, learn from, like, look at what it, look at what you did. Take take what works <laughs> from, it's bad. It's, it's a boring game. But you know what? You tried and you have some ideas. So round two, buddy, let's move on. <laughs> I think it's, I, and I think that it, it says a lot that people who worked on this went to do devolver stuff which is sure. almost universally pretty killer oh um, yeah absolutely so it's make it's okay to make bad things and you should make bad things yes. um, all, make I, a lot of bad things just make so many bad things the first so step, many what is things. it fucking what's the adventure time quote the first step or sucking at something is the first step to being kind of good at something well, there yeah. we go. Yeah, and um, and what's his name? Ira Glass has a has a much longer and more eloquent quote about like how you you know you, when you start out making something you're gonna suck and then you're gonna get better but then you're gonna still think your stuff sucks because even though your skill cha- increases your taste also increases. There's like a there's always graph, gonna be yeah. the, there's always yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. that gap between your taste and what you should be making and what you can make. And then eventually the idea is you get to a point where they kind of, you know, intersect. Um, I hope I hope what people take away from from listening to this isn't just like, oh, these dudes had fun hanging out and tearing into a game. Um, But like, (laughs) I I hope that we succeeded in talking about why these aspects of this kind of fall short and in what ways they could have been better. And I think it kind of boils down to why does this podcast exist, which is. Well, why don't they just talk about good FPS games? That's boring. What I love about Legendary and like the Xbox 360 era is just the fact that there were all these kind of attempts and ideas at trying something that wasn't Call of Maybe they were inspired by Halo or Call of Duty, but people wanted to do something with it. They wanted to kind of expand the scope. And maybe they didn't have Microsoft backing. Maybe they were a bunch of new developers, on, or maybe they were like some old stalwarts who didn't know how to adapt 
But in all of that, they would end up making a lot of like really weird decisions that, hey, some, you know, it's like punk rock. It's like, oh, you shouldn't tune your guitars like that or whatever. But a lot of the time, there are some games yeah. that are like, no, this is this is like quite ahead of its time in regard to what it's doing, and, or this is so unlike anything else. And I think Legendary is a great example yeah, of I, no one's done urban fantasy like this. Right. You know, this is mm-hmm. this is a killer concept, and there is a lot of cool set piece stuff in it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. It, it does but like especially when you kind of compare it to other stuff, it does fall short. But then that's you know, that's the that's mm-hmm. the problem with compare that's the problem with comparison, is that you're always going to like pick it apart you're not going to, you're not going to like engage with legendary as legendary you're engaging with legendary as where is its place in the 360 oeuvre i guess which yeah obviously is a shame for that but i don't know it, it that's what i, I mean I, this is why yeah. we do bullets and i think yeah. we want to talk about these interesting things that would be otherwise forgotten and just don't back I guess. so back when i was in film school um i was part of this group that uh, we it was called wash up movie wednesdays um right. and every wednesday we would watch you know a couple bad movies you know stuff you know from the usually between the 70s and 80s just your your vhs schlocky shit and yeah, i have to say of, of cinematography the i we tended to learn more from watching this these bad movies than we ever yeah. did from watching mm-hmm. Uh, the good stuff, like the good I, stuff, can be can be very can, true, can be inspirational. But the bad stuff, it's like, oh, okay, I actually understand why this scene doesn't work this way now because sure. I saw it, I saw it executed so poorly. But if they just changed this, if they had just turned, changed that angle, if they had just done that, you start to be able to see the gaps in the presentation, mm-hmm. and I think that's something to be said for examining games that were overshadowed because not, not all the games that we're talking about on this series are going to be bad, but they no, were dope, but some a of them lot just of them were sell very well, or they've been, some of them did didn't, uh, yeah, either they didn't sell very well. They might've been very popular when they came out, but have been kind of forgotten by time or whatever. Mm-hmm. So looking back at the things that were overshadowed or just in, uh, improperly executed, I think you can learn a lot more about game design than just by staring at the things that are scoring like 85 on Metacritic every year yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it's, I, th- I think the specific word, you said uh, inspirational. I think, I think when you look at the mid games and the bad yes. games, yeah. uh, you, it's, do you, what you play and what you get from it is based on whether you are looking for something to be inspirational or educational. Sure. Mm. In your medium. Legendary, in some ways, is both. Yeah. Because it has so many great ideas, but you can learn a lot about game design by looking at the ways that it fails. And it's especially yes. interesting to go back and look at the things that it does um, compared to everything that is just kind of wrote and understood as like the best way to do things for x y and z reasons nowadays yes. like put your checkpoint after the unskippable cutscene um yes. give extra healing items when you can um do good <laughs> do good level design <laughs> yeah pay, pay for somebody else to do music which isn't just metallica um have varied music like it's there's there's a lot there is so so much about this game that i think you can genuinely learn i could talk for hours about this game unfortunately um <laughs> well, unfortunately this is this is going to be a six hour podcast so uh, you know Yo, welcome, welcome to welcome. welcome to the opener um uh, yeah. uh, right. I, I, I mean i genuinely think people should maybe not play this but watch a long play of it yeah. yeah, people should watch a commentaryless long play of this game, and like really look into what this game does, and yeah. and really really try to think about it because it's it's so much it's so yeah. much. You know, you know, it's funny though because I didn't beat the campaign, and that was just kind of like I felt like I kind of got my fill, like I knew sort of where. 
even though you did like mention a lot of like cool set pieces and stuff towards the end, I sort of felt like I kind of know what the motions of this are going to be. The one Absolutely. thing I wish I had tried was the multiplayer, which all the servers are dead for it. It was all on GameSpy. <laughs> they are on long Game gone at this Spy. point. Yeah, GameSpy oh, has it. a title card at the beginning. Yeah, GameSpy has a fucking title card. It's, Rest in it's one of the GameSpy. Rip GameSpy. I remember Bro. hearing about GameSpy shutting down and like having an emotional moment. I, I mean, I remember that happening because all the Wii Connect and DS uh, online uh, services uh-huh. were tied into it. So you could no longer play um, like Animal Crossing City folk properly or like Mario Kart DS or whatever. But I would love to have seen how, especially because like there's some games that we cover later down the line where we do the single player campaigns. It's like, oh, this is OK. But the multiplayer stuff is like, oh, no, like the mechanics that didn't really make a lot of sense in the campaign. They're really good here. Like we do, um, we're doing an episode on Geist coming up, and Ooh. the guest that we have on was way more into the multiplayer side of stuff than the single player. And the single player campaign was okay. It was kind of like it was half puzzly, half Half Life. But the multiplayer sounded like super interesting because it had the whole ghost jumping between bodies and objects and kind of how that affected deathmatch and stuff. So I would have loved to have known, like, because this game has the whole animus and healing mechanic and it has like you have these factions you know with the monsters where they're mm-hmm. not aligned to anybody so like that's that a thing played too is like that's a thing that i'm really interested in for bullet time is these games are like in the era of quote-unquote tacked on multiplayer oh yeah yeah that alone is very exciting mm-hmm. um did we have we're at like an hour and a half. I'm do I'm I'm doing the host thing and checking it, and we're at like an hour and a half. How long I'm, is it supposed I, to I'm be? I'm feeling. Um, I feel like we could start to wrap up. I, I haven't really got any more thoughts about legendary. We've kind of nailed stuff on the head of. I interesting I ambitious idea. <laughs> I unfortunately have very many more thoughts, but I'm not going to say them here. <laughs> I was going to say uh, no. That's fair enough. If, mostly, we, we, mostly because of time. <laughs> no, that is that that is that is absolutely fair. I guess sort of then maybe to wrap things from there is that I mean you would recommend people play Legendary. Like just to, I didn't say or, or, I did not say play. I did not say play. No 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 do not no, play this. No, game. that's true. You didn't say play. You just said <laughs> seek the, it out and like experience. Watch it. If yeah. you if you want to be a uh a primary source instead of a secondary source of information for people who ask you about this game, play it. Yeah. Yes. If you just like, if you want the visceral painful experience, play it. If you just want to know like what the fuck is going on here is I, there's so much that we didn't talk about because there's so much going on in this game. Then just, yeah, watch. we didn't, we didn't I, talk about I, the big ass golem. Did they show a fucking golem? In the intro sequence, and you don't fight it. Yeah, I'm you, you mad around, around to the other well, side you set of up EMPs, which I guess no, is kind no, of like... we can't, we can't do this. We're gonna, we're gonna keep talking about it. <laughs> legendary. Kevin, what about you? And I especially think it's interesting because, like, not to give away too much, but like the kind of the future episodes we do, there will be the interesting contrast of in the future, as, 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 especially in the Raven Software stuff where. The, the earlier games they do is kind of more your FPS era stuff. And then as it goes on, it goes more into the Xbox and 360 stuff, sure. which is obviously where my kind of FPS credentials lie in. Right. But I guess just to kind of you, like, what's your like final thoughts on, like, Legendary, I guess? Final thoughts. Um, I mean, the level design, uninspired. Enemies are fine uh, for the most part. <laughs> Uh, depending on, I mean, they, they look fine. It still feels a little weird and out of place. Like we're not, I mean, the whole fucking thing with Pandora's box and, and I don't know, I guess it's supposed to be Greek, but I get, get lamb hoot in here to, to, uh, talk about that. <laughs> he complained um, about why the fuck with the werewolves and in Pandora's box as a Norse thing. Um, but yeah, so it's, real. it's, it's it manages to be boring and and also not very long simultaneously, which is really hard to pull off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I do echo the fact that yeah, if you 
if you worked on this, I hope you did take something. I thought I, I hope anyone who works on something bad takes something to learn from it. And that yeah, is I hope all those guys are even on even Devolver. animus pants. Even I I want animus pants to to learn something <laughs> yeah. from this game. But yeah, that's and all, my and, and all the dudes and all the ladies who were shouted out in the credits. All the dudes all and all the ladies. Well. Best weapon is the axe. By the way, uh, for some reason, if you do play around with the axe a lot, it does actually happen to one shot a lot of things for some reason. That's true, yeah. It's it the best kills way to the fire the salamanders in one shot. It cuts off the werewolves' heads. You just wouldn't think to use it. <laughs> it's it's funny that like every game of that era felt like it had to have the iconic melee weapon because like Half-Life has the crowbar and it's like, okay, well, Bioshock's going to have the monkey wrench which is the same as like System Shock. You know, um, but this game is going to have a fire axe. That's going to be its... Un- which I guess is very kind of New Yorky, I suppose. Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, New York's the only city in the world which has a fire service. I guess I don't fucking New, I don't know New York is actually New, 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 New York, York a, is actually the only city in the United States that has fire axes. You oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and be like, hey, look, I'm I'm axing here. When you go over to London, oh that's just like, God. oh, you can't bring that in here. We've never seen one of those before. <laughs> <laughs> Import taxes like, on fire axes are <laughs> pretty intense reason, after Brexit. For some reason, I'm imagining the scene from fucking Austin Powers where he's defrosted and they're going through like all of his items, but for some reason, one of them's the fire axe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, sure. That's so fire. Crazy. Jesus Christ! Fucking <gasps> London fire axes. God. You know. Oh my God. We got um, anything else about Legendary? <laughs> let's play the box no. office game. Uh, Nevin, we're gonna mm. play a little game like Saw, but not like Saw. Totally. Um, <laughs> if we're we playing were a game like Saw, co- I already did Legendary. I don't want to do another. There we go. We were talking a lot about the context Which of when this released game. and kind of what it was competing against, and so we've invented this brand new game for this podcast, never been seen elsewhere. Sorry, even not though, the box office game. Even though Kevin just called it the box office game, like we're doing the blank check one. Well, they do it about movies that come to <laughs> box offices. <laughs> We're talking about the top 75 games on the U.S. charts. So, um, yeah. Uh, In 2008? So this game came out November 8th, 2008, and the week that it debuted on the charts is when we're talking about it now. This game did make the top 75 (laughs) on the charts. (laughs) What? It doesn't even qualify on the charts, unfortunately. Didn't even rank. it only sold a couple of hundred, I think it only sold like maybe a hundred thousand units, maybe even less than that. It did not like, like I said, I, I mean, it killed Gamecock and kind of, even though Spark and Limited were able to then go on and do it some strangled, projects. It strangled, it choked the Gamecock. It did, yeah, the Gamecock got, yeah, they ch- yeah, they choked out the Gamecock. And then Continue, they carry on, let's, we don't need to. <laughs> <Let's just, laughs> yeah, I'm not going to acknowledge it. Uh, but, uh, but between the two of you, we are going to try and guess what the top five games were in the charts that week. Um, so between, uh, we haven't got like buzzers or anything, so you're just going to have to guess. But um, there are points on the line, maybe, I don't know. Hopefully somebody might track these after the fact. But anyways, at number one debuting in the charts selling 1.1 million copies in its first week uh, the only clues i will give you is it is a shooter much like uh this podcast the games that we are going to cover but it is specifically a third person shooter mm-hmm. gears of war it is gears of war but which one two Gears of War 2 for the Xbox 360. Nice. Oh! Nevin winning the first point ever on bullet time. Congratulations. Now, at number two, and this will this clue will give it away, not only has it sold 13 million copies so far, it is a fucking juggernaut of a title. Actually, that's the clue I'll give you first. It has sold 13 million copies. Numbers mean nothing to me. 13 million is a lot. <laughs> In I... games. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'll give you the second clue then. It is in its 103rd week on the charts. It has been there for ages. We Sports. 2008. It's not We Sports. 
it is Wii Sports. There we go. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, Wii Sports wow. is number two on the charts is in its 103rd week. That's awesome. Million million. Wait, it, way nuts. to go, way to go, Wii Sports. Good yeah, job. Yeah, Wii Sports just fucking dominating. It is fucking powerful. Number three on the charts, debuting on the charts, selling 200,000 200, copies in its first week, is an FPS game exclusively for the PS3, which I feel we may, we could cover it at some point on Bullet Time. PS3 exclusive. FPS. Haze? Yeah. FPS. It is not Haze. Damn. Uh... Haze is one that I want to play. I really want to play that game. It, Haze, we're planning to do on the podcast. We're doing a, a free radical mini series. So if you want to come back to talk about Haze, you're, you're more than welcome. Don't tempt me. I don't need an <laughs> excuse to play Haze, but I'll take one. We just need um, ex- we, Nobody right. wants to be the guest on the Haze episode. So <laughs> <laughs> I did legendary. Haze can't be worse. Oh, you'd be you'd be surprised. Uh, it's not. Is it like? It's, I don't know the years for. What's these. its color it's, palette? Is it something like black, or it's not black. No, black. Which black is the was next a PS2 episode. game. Yeah, that was the next mm. episode we're doing on Bullet Time. Funnily enough, and um, what is its color palette? Brown. Brown that narrowed gray. it down. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Brown That's the gray. biggest fucking guess who board we're playing with then. Yeah, it's a brown and gray FPS game from the 360 year. Oh, I it's have like, thousands it, of titles. It's like what none is... of the faces go down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what is its... Um, what's the name. word? What's its... <laughs> yeah, what's its name? What is uh, its poster child weapon? Ooh, good question. Ooh. Um, I think it is a... World War One style assault rifle. I will give you that clue. It's alternate history World War One. Is it Alt- Return his- to Castle Wolfenstein? No, this is, is a PS3 a- game. This is a PS3 game. Um, PS3 exclusive. Alt is history it- World War One. I'm. It's not. It's not mag. It's not massive it, it action is- game. It is not Mag. I'm um, thinking of like all the PS3 exclusive shit. Okay, I'll give you another clue. It no is idea. Weird War One, but the enemy combatants are aliens. Fuck. I, I have well, no idea. Kind of, I have no sort idea what this is. You're making this they're up. They're not quite this game aliens. Never, this didn't happen. This game, this this game, game exists. Exist. This, is, this, this is a game from a trilogy that exists on the PS3. James is gaslighting me in the first episode. I... <laughs> 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 okay, I will give you I will give you another clue then. It is by a now Sony second party who is better known for Spider Man, so Insomniac Games. What the f- what shooter did Insomniac It's not Medal of Honor. It's not Medal of Honor, no. I have no idea. I feel like you're gonna say it and I'm gonna be like, ah yes, this Yeah, I'm I've I'm, I, I'm, I'm tapped. Out. You could I'm, you could give more hints, but I don't give, think I'm gonna get it. Yeah. Are you, you're both throwing in the towel on this. I'm, We're throwing in the towel. I, yeah. Resistance 2. The sequel to Resistance Fall of Man. Resistance. Resistance. Okay. Oh, that yes. really memorable title? Resistance? Resistance. Weren't you just playing one of the Resistance games? I was uh, thinking James? Of... Uh, hmm. Uh, not recently, no. I, like I said, I was planning to maybe put resistance on the list for bullet time because that is an inch. I mean, we've been talking about another like, one that I re. I'm looking at it now. Wow, this was very brown and green. Oh yeah, this is an interesting game in regards to uh, Insomniac Games. They make Spyro and they make Ratchet and Clank, and then them and Naughty Dog are very similar because they do Crash and they do Jacks, and then they go into the PS3 era and they go, we need to make realistic human FPS shootery style games because that's what's new. And fucking Naughty Dog strike big with Uncharted because they know what they're doing. And these guys are like, ah, oh, we'll do Call of Duty but you'll fight, uh, we'll, do, we'll do Medal of Honor but you're fighting aliens. And- you know, I was, I was actually uh, I'm gonna say I was kind of close. I was thinking Killzone. Interesting. Uh, Killzone yeah, resist- one we might cover. Killzone two and well, actually I don't know. God. That 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 sort of 
Killzone, I feel like, still has a bit of cash to it. Resistance in Two has the most 2008 fucking box art. Oh yeah, it's I have so... ever seen. It Killzone's is... another <laughs> series in general that I really want to play because I like the way the the guns look. Yeah. That's why I wasn't quite sure what to say in regards to what the series weapon is, because I think it is an assault. I think it is an old World War One style assault rifle, but I think it does have, because it's an Insomniac game, it does have like valves and like extra sci-fi stuff applied to it. But yeah. Oh shit! Uh, the the guy, cool. the lead character or whatever, Nathan Hale, yeah. is a uh, fun fact played by Travis Willingham. Of, uh, what's it? The fucking D&D thing. Um, oh, he's on, um, it's Critical, Critical Role. Role. Critical Role, yeah. That guy. Oh. Yeah. Amazing. Interesting, Very huh? If we have to do the Resistance games, yeah, we'll, we'll email also, uh, them and be like, hey, we're tiny hey, podcast let's, bullets. Huh? Let's email, like Tra- to- <laughs> yeah, Travis Willingham and see if he can do the show, you know? I bet he'd do it. I, I, I'm sure if we ask nicely and we don't I'm sure don't if you comment, paid him. See, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, if you subscribe to the Patreon folks, maybe we'll make, maybe we'll make that happen. Well, all uh, right. Number four. That was fun. Oh, oh no, hold on. We got two more. Is there oh, two more games God. to go? We're nearly, we're nearly done. Don't worry. We'll, we'll speed through these. Number all four right. in its 25th week, two million copies sold. Genre? Another Nintendo Wii game. Mario Kart. Not Mario Kart. Wait. Oh, fuck. Mario Party. Not Mario Party. It's a Nintendo title. It is a Nintendo Wii title. Yes. Is it a Legend of Zelda game? Skyward Sword? It's not Legend of Zelda, no. It is very similar to the the game that has already been guessed previously. Uh, We've guessed so many. Wii Sports 2? It's not Wii Sports 2, but it is (laughs) in the... Pilot Wings! It's not Pilot Wings. It's in the Wii subgenre, though. Or the Wii prefix genre. I'm not going to... Do more guesses. The Wii was my least played console. Okay, um, it's the one that comes with a big accessory. We fit. fit. Two million coffee sold, and then number nice. five in its second week, Xbox 360 game, 500k copies sold. It is a reboot of a classic PC series turned kind of into an FPS game. Uh. XCOM. <laughs> Not XCOM, but similar, like, tactical game turns into a kind of tactically FPS game. Mm. The oh, XCOM oh the fuck, oh fuck, I know this one. <laughs> oh god damn it, I know this one. Um, it's, like, it's a first person shooter about the spies, the cyberpunk-ish spies. No, it's not Syndicate. It's not the- not Syndicate? Fuck, I got no idea then. If it's not Syndicate. Um RPG series. This is like this was a reboot that was like rumored for years. People didn't think it was happening and it did. And now it's like a long running franchise. Um every video essayist eventually makes a video about this game and why it wasn't oh. as good as the old ones. Halo 2. <laughs> <laughs> not Halo 2, no. Every video essayist makes a, ge- a video on, on this well, game. Well, I haven't made a video on it, but most video essayists cut their teeth on a retrospective of this game and why it wasn't as good as the old ones. H Bomber guy has made a video about it. Oh, uh, Fallout, oh Fallout 3. 3. Fallout 3 for the Xbox 360. Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at number six was We Play. At number seven, Mario Kart Wii. At number eight, Quantum of Solace, which we may cover at some point. Number nine is Guitar Hero World Tour. And number ten is Fable Two. That was the what was in the charts that that week. Legendary, legendary. unfortunately, did not make it. It's fucked up that Legendary didn't make top ten. <laughs> I'm surprised. I mean, if Resistance to, uh, Resistance Two is a better game than Legendary, I'm not. I'm not even gonna fucking yeah, no, joke so about that. <laughs> Don't put that out there. <laughs> Resistance 2 actually had staying power, is the thing. I can, Resistance I can 2 Google, got a sequel. <laughs> I, can, I can Google Resistance game, and Resistance will come up. I Google Legendary game, and I get guides for Mass Effect. There we go, yeah. <laughs> or, like, top ten legendary game franchises. Or stuff like that. <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, I was trying to look up screenshots of this fucking game. Can't and do it. Th- I got that article. It's impossible. God. Nevin. Oh, wonderful. 
It has been a treat having you on. Thank you for coming on, and thank you for actually making in an impassioned defense for a game which I thought was going to be... I felt like it was going to be like, you know that video of Michael Jordan where they're like, oh, if he misses a single dunk, uh, you all get free shoes. And it's just him fucking slotting dunks one after the other after the other, just yeah, fucking fuck styling kids. on these kids. I thought that was going to be us talking about <laughs> so Legendary. Fucked up. <laughs> I know. I, uh, thank you for having me. I had a great time talking about this game. It is unfortunate that I still want to talk about this game. Um, but... I, I had a great time. Thank you very much for having me on. No problem. Is there any, um, before you head off, are there any last minute plugs or anything that you want people to have uh, a look at? Yeah, once again, I have been, uh, I've been Nevin. Uh, I use they, he pronouns in case you forgot. Uh, yep. I am an award winning queer tabletop role playing game designer based out of Central Texas. You can find me at Fork20. Uh, you can find my wife at Dinoberry Jam. And you can find all the kick ass games and stuff that we do at Dinoberry Press or dinoberrypress.com. Nice. You've got Kevin, thank awesome you for joining stuff. us on this maiden voyage of Bullet Time. Uh, what would you like people to have a look at? Yeah, go check out the Pixelit podcast. You can find it where all fine podcasts are sold. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at the Arcadeologist, or you can follow Pixelit at Pixelit Pod on both Twitter and Instagram, or check out our website, pixelitpod.com, where we have transcripts of all of our Pixelit episodes. <gasps> nice. Um, I've been James. You can follow me on Twitter at Hot Cider, H O T C Y D R. Um, on the next episode, which will technically be going up the same time as this episode, but they'll hopefully be in sequence that you'll listen to this one first and then the other one, uh, we're talking to Hamish Black from Writing on Games about uh, EA and Criterion Games' 2006 shooter, Black. So I hope you join us for that. That'll be uh, good. But until next time... Hold on, I'm trying to come up with a good... Okay, no, I gotta go. Okay, until next time, folks, keep blasting. A bull timing out of the way of the bullets. <laughs> <laughs> you can't escape these bullets. You cannot escape them. They are it. The Bullet Time Podcast is made possible by Eric Hamilton Schneider, Valerie B, VG, and the Hot Cider Support Tier. If you'd like to help with the production of episodes and gain access to extra content, consider supporting over at patreon.com forward slash hot cider. That's H-O-T-C-Y-D-E-R. A special thanks to Max Coburn for the bullet time theme tune.